he's saying that he expects inflation to rise over the year, but that would be, quote, neither particularly large nor persistent. And he's saying long term, and I quote, we think the low inflation dynamics that we've seen for the past 25 years are still intact. Now, Peter, you have long been sounding the alarm over looming inflation. So what do you make of those comments? And when do you think we will see that inflation surge? Well, you know, first of all, when just going back to Bloomberg, you know, I don't know if you know this, but after you know being on Bloomberg for years and forecasting the financial crisis, after the financial crisis occurred and I was you know proven right, they banned me from their air. So I haven't been on Bloomberg for close to ten years. So well, it, has, it has been a while. I haven't, I haven't been on Bloomberg uh, since 2010 myself. So it has been a while. Yeah. I wasn't banned, but I guess we both left around about the same time. But yeah, right. look, so you, you, basically, made a, you made a lot of correct so, calls then. Right. And the Bloomberg audience is not getting the benefit of hearing my calls now because, you know, Bloomberg <laughs> itself doesn't doesn't want to, you know, uh, but, enable but, that. But, but on, the Kitco question, audience is. Yes, the Kitco audience is going to get much better information. Uh, and, and so I would not put any stock into what any Fed chairman says, because you always have to remember that these guys are there to tell a story and they always want to put a positive spin on everything. And even if they're concerned about something, they'll never admit it. Like when Ben Bernanke was at the Fed telling everybody not to worry about the mortgage market, subprime was contained. He later admitted in an interview after he was no longer Fed chair that he didn't really believe that. He was just simply trying to advance the administration's uh, you know, view that everything was great. And so he couldn't really speak his mind. He kind of had to act as if he was part of the Bush administration, you know, which I thought was a very telling admission that not many people picked up on. But I think Janet Yellen, uh, or now Jerome Powell, rather, at Fed, Yellen's at Treasury. But I think Powell also fancies himself part of that uh, Biden administration. And so he wants to say positive things. He can't say, oh, I think we're going to have really high inflation, uh, because then, I mean, what is the Fed going to do about it? Well, you better raise interest rates. You better shrink your money supply. You better stop financing all these stimulus bills. So in order to validate their easy money policy, uh, Powell basically has to say that any increases that we experience in consumer prices are just a temporary aberration. It's transitory and don't worry about it. But I don't think that's the case at all. I think that what we're seeing now is the beginning of a very, very big acceleration in U.S. Uh, consumer prices. Uh, you know, Powell may think it's contained to a transitory event, uh, but it's not. It's as much contained as the subprime uh, crisis was contained. And I think the low inflation that we've enjoyed over the last 20, 25 years I think a lot of that is through sleight of hand. I think that the CPI has actually gone, you know, has not really reflected the extent to which prices have gone up. Uh, so I think we're right. understating the increase in consumer prices. But I think a lot of the temporary factors that were kind of mitigating the increases, because America was able to run these huge trade deficits, we were able to export our dollars to countries like China and China would warehouse the dollars, recycle them into U.S. treasuries, and then replace them with consumer goods. The Chinese were producing all these low-cost consumer goods for Americans to buy, and the rest of the world was, was helping out. And so these factors were mitigating uh, consumer prices, plus a lot of the right. liquidity, the inflation that the Fed was creating, it went into the stock market, it went into the real estate market, it, you know, into the cryptocurrency market, uh, you know, into the bond market. So. I think a lot of these bubbles, as they deflate, the money is ultimately going to go into consumer prices, commodities and, and things like that. And so we're going right. to we're about to see a tsunami of inflation. And, you know, whether the Fed is oblivious to it or just lying about it, you know, there's no way to know. Well, you know, speaking of CPI, again, harking back to my past, I recall one of your very colorful analogies that stuck with me. And you said that Having the government control the CPI data is like having the mob give a report on crime. So very effective messaging there certainly gets the point across. So, OK, so given we can't really trust the government with regards to the accuracy of where inflation is, 
and where consumer prices are really headed. What do you use to make your assessment to figure out what the real rate of inflation is? And you say we're headed for a tsunami of inflation. When? I mean, that is the big question, Peter. When? Yeah, well, to my, in my mind, I think it's already started. I mean, you can look at some of these price increases and they're very spectacular. And, uh, you know, they're just starting to work their way through the system. And again, I don't think we're transitioning uh, or it's transitory unless you're saying we're transitioning from low inflation to high inflation, which is uh, really what's happening. But what you want to look at to understand inflation is you look at the money supply because it's the money supply that is was being inflated. I mean, literally, that's where the word comes from. Inflation is to expand. You inflate, right? When something is inflated, it expands. Prices don't expand. They go up, they go down, but they don't expand. It's money supply that expands. And we have the most expansionary monetary policy in U.S. history. Uh, and no other era is even close to what we're doing right now. So this is massive inflation. And so to expect that prices are not going to respond by rising uh, is, is ridiculous. But then you also have to look at the supply side of the equation, because as the Federal Reserve is dumping all this newly printed money onto the economy, there's actually less stuff for people to buy. Because more and more right. people who used to be engaged in productive activities, whether they were producing goods or providing services, a lot of these people are now sitting at home collecting uh, these government checks. So we're creating more money to buy goods, but we're producing fewer goods to buy. And so how can prices not go way up? I mean, anybody who doesn't think that prices are gonna go way up, I mean, just not only don't they understand basic economics, they just don't even have any common sense. Well, you know, uh, Peter, to your point, a lot of people sitting at home uh, collecting unemployment benefits that paid them a lot better than their actual jobs. <laughs> and of course, we've also got uh, the highest excess savings in U.S. households that we've ever had. There's about $1.6 trillion in excess mm -hmm. savings, U.S. savings at multi-year highs. So what happens when the economy is fully opened and all of that pent up demand is released? I mean, to your point, more money chasing fewer goods. So is that when you expect the surge when we have full economic opening? Yeah, you remember a lot of this money that people have saved was sent to them by the government. 